On this edition of Check 6 Aviation, the RV-10 Horizontal Stabilizer gets a whole lot of prime prep and the first rivets coming up. Welcome back to Check 6 Aviation, my friend. Here we're back in the workshop. We have another installment of the RV-10 Horizontal Stabilizer build. This is the final prep video where we got a whole lot of prime deburring and the first rivets coming in and also uh, took a little trip that I'll tell you about later. And uh, if you're lucky, maybe I'll go ahead and if you want to hear it, that is, I'll include it in the next video. So comment down below once you hear about it. Let me know. Without further ado, let's get to it. As with anything building an airplane, the first thing that you want to do, which is actually it looks like I've already done that here, is deburr uh, any new parts or any parts that you're working with for the first time. Actually, here I've read in the plans where it says, hey, you want to countersink, you want to machine countersink the holes, which actually makes sense because this is the forward spar and these holes here are the ones that will accept the skin. There are some, uh, some of these holes though are exposed. Um, no, actually this is the forward spar, not the rear spar. Uh, some of those holes in the middle are exposed. Um, so I'm not sure yet why those holes are machine countersunk, but it does specifically state in the plans. So here I am, the new outdoor work area, specifically its uh, primary function is, you know, get a little vitamin D sunlight when it's uh, sunny here in, in West Texas, and also to give me some ventilation for when I actually do go ahead and prime. I am using Exo Noble two-part epoxy primer, and what the instructions say that not in addition to it being a one-to-one -one mixture between the base and the hardener, uh, you do want to let it sit for 30 minutes while it does some sort of chemical composition, chemical um, uh, mixing of its own. I don't know why, but it, it is what it is. So. Obviously, because I'm priming, I have chosen to prime because, you know, I, I do envision myself flying to some far off uh, exotic getaway that may or may not be surrounded by salt water. So, I'm, you know, it is what it is. Besides, West Texas gets a lot of moisture up from the Gulf during the summer. So, we've primed. We've got the first parts going together here. The, this is the rear spar doubler and also the spar caps going in for actually just click going together at this point. Um, now it is important to note, uh, while I am uh, doing the rivets here, on the spar caps and also the doubler, I am not doing anything more than that yet. Uh, at this point in the video, I've already, uh, at this point in the build, I already have the mounting brackets. You'll see the nine holes that are closest to my body where I've got that Clico in, uh, in holding the doubler in. Those have already been made in the previous video. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. And at this point, I am super stoked because it's time to leave for Oregon. All right, major, major update. Got back at 5 a.m. this morning after a long, really long, long drive up to the mothership, which is 1,900, just under 1,900 miles, one way, and I now have 
my HS1003 rear spar to replace the one that got bent up. So uh, had a really long and much deserved rest, but now it's time to get back at, back at it. So like Mike Beatty says, back to work. I really do need to be more mindful of my, shall we say, arm gestures so they don't appear like they are looking like I'm doing something I'm not. We'll just leave it at that. Of course, with it, like I said before, any new part requires deburring. So this being a new part, we are getting those corners, those edges rounded off because that does eliminate the possibility of cracks, even though the cracks, you know, the, these portions that I'm deburring right now are round themselves. Anytime you have a, a square, like when something is being punched out, that leaves a, a, a corner, a very sharp corner. So round them off. And of course, that can take a while, so this is probably something that I wish I had known about when I first started this build. But hey, you don't know what you don't know. And of course, even uh, all spars, well not all spars, but this, this spar definitely has its own doubler. So deburring that as well getting those corners nice and round. And let me tell you, this angle grinder, this little angle grinder makes a big difference. So if you don't have one, I highly recommend you getting one. I just got mine from Harbor Freight for about, oh, maybe about 10, 15, well, less than $30. Um, I think the most expensive one they had was about $30. I think I only paid about 10. And this is why after Drilling out, according to the plans, you go ahead and take everything off. Make sure that you have the all the, the little chips from the metal cleaned off. Because, well, yeah, you don't want that in between and causing any problems. Especially, you know, further down the line. Now, you notice that I did mark... The holes that I'm not supposed to do anything with because that's what it calls for in the plans. I want to make sure that I don't cause any oops, especially on a part like this where it would have been, oh, something like $900 to ship. Okay, granted, I spent probably a lot more than that in the trip, but I made some memories. Here, let's pause the video for the moment and show you a trip down memory lane in Oregon because we had a fantastic time up there. We visited the Evergreen Air and Space Museum. An interesting fact about the Evergreen Air and Space Museum is that they actually have a water park on site. And this is the view of the water park and of course my first thought upon seeing this Pewmonga 747 is sorry captain you can't park there. One of the main attractions to the Evergreen Air and Space Museum besides the really cool planes and the projects that they have going on is the Spruce Goose. This has got to be the largest airplane I have ever seen. I mean, the wingspan is going from there all the way to there. I present to you the Howard Hughes Spruce Goose. One of the nice things about the Air and Space Museum, uh, as far as the Spruce Goose exhibit, is that they do give guided tours. 40 bucks gets you a guided tour for up to four people, and I, while I was there I yeah the there was a couple that was just nice enough to allow me and my daughter to my eldest daughter Serena to join them and because of that I was able to get this picture taken from where Howard Hughes sat when the Spruce Goose actually flew for its one and only time 
And there's a couple of eyebrow windows up there as escape hatches for the, you know, the crew that allowed this view. This thing is massive. Oh my God. The H4, affectionately known as the Spruce Goose. And this is where it was flown. And just to give you an idea of actually how high we were above the deck, this is my wife and our youngest daughter, Madeline, standing down there wondering where the heck I am because, well, they, they didn't know that we were invited on the tour. And of course, it's a flying boat, so you got to have some place for the crew to tow the line. And this gives you an idea of just how big it, the Spruce Goose is in relation to modern aircraft. That's enough for the Spruce Goose. Let's get back to building the RV-10. So the very first thing that you, re well, not the very first thing, but, you know, in building the skeleton for the RV-10, you, of course, you have to do a lot of count machine countersinking because and, and you only do them on one side of these longerons I don't, or uh, the I don't know what you call them but um, yeah, spar caps uh, whatever I, I don't know but there's only one side of these that will actually be su countersunk because those are the sides that are uh, accepting the skin so you make sure that you know there's there's holes on both sides of the angle here so make sure that you're only doing them on the appropriate side and you can tell by the the diagram in the plants now there is a portion of the plans that call for not only bending a couple of the uh, a few of the the um the ribs by nine degrees it's the two inside ribs, the very two, the, the most, the innermost out inside ribs, and uh, on in, by nine degrees on each end, um, because they're at an angle, they're at an inward angle to each other, because uh, they form the 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 kind of the cone that this will sit in, and there's also a call out in the plans to where you do where you cut away a portion of them you only do two cuts each there's a cut where you cut um, the uh i want to say the the one tab and then there's another one where you cut both tabs on the inside as called for by the plans i made the mistake of uh misunderstanding this and cut away all well not all of them uh according to i thought i needed more like half of them on one and half of them on the other so i went ahead and ordered more and ordered the the ones that i don't need so i have a lot of scrap ribs that i can't use but that's okay that's part of the building process so onward to a lot of scuffing up and pre-coating in preparation for priming and final assembly. You really do want to get a really good scuff on this because this is what helps the primer stick to the part. I cannot emphasize this enough. This is not something that you want to try and rush through. Here you see I'm wearing my work shirt, which means that I'm accomplishing this. I'm trying to get this done before I have to leave for work, and so I'm rushing it. I came back later that night after work, and I was not happy with how things turned out. It turned out, and I had to do it all over again. Well, that's okay though, because with pre-coat, even the professionals, the, the AMPs, like my friend at, who works for Envoy, says that the, even they do this process twice. 
The second time is just to make sure that it took. They they make they yeah, pre-coat it once, get a good scuff on it, rinse it off, look for the water break test, and then do it again after letting in well you rinse it you, you don't rinse it off right away. You let it sit for about five minutes. And this is something that I didn't understand until I met my friend Matt. I wanted to get all of the priming done and out of the way first. All of the prep work done first before I went ahead and did the assembly work. It makes sense. Um, but I skipped a lot of steps and that's probably where I went wrong in terms of you know, pre-assembly and understanding how things are supposed to go together. And instead of just doing it all like I was supposed to. Um, so, yeah. I think for the, the elevators coming up in the next couple of videos after this section, I'm actually going to follow the plans as is. Um, I'm, I've got, I've, I've actually done, started doing some of the, the, uh, the pre construction prep, like priming the interior skins, determining which side of the skins, because the, the all the skins for both rudder uh, for both elevators, uh, are identical or they're identical in the cut. And what determines them is what side you know, the, the, there's a top and bottom, and you'll you, you easy, it's easy to tell which is the top and which is the bottom. But they go on. Uh, there's there's two elevators, so yeah, there's that. Anyway, you'll see when we get to that section. And even though I'm outside at my wife's. So, you know, severe suggestion telling me, hey, you don't want to breathe this stuff in. And a lot of you out there saying in the last video, hey, you don't want to breathe this stuff in. Uh, I, okay, you're right. And, norm, uh, and when I was priming, especially indoors, yeah, I would definitely wear the respirator. Um, I thought I could get by with it being outside and, you know, not wearing it because I was in a very well ventilated space. And after some thought, yeah, you're all all right. I don't want to breathe this stuff in. So thank you for looking out for my best interest. I appreciate it. That's why you guys are some of the best viewers on YouTube. So if memory serves correctly, these ribs that I'm doing now, that I'm pre-coating and getting ready for priming, are the replacement ones that I had ordered from Vans because I goofed. I'm human. I make mistakes. I learn from them, at least in theory. So, respirator on, batch of primer cooking, and there we go. Spray time. And, but anytime, you, anytime you're doing this, Make sure you clean your gun. Make sure you clean your gun. I had to, I had to completely disassemble my gun and clean it out because it wasn't spraying right. And so it is time for some dimpling. Now, be very careful on this. Pay attention to the plans, the last page of this section the the rivet callouts because there are a couple of yeah uh, there's a few holes that you do not dimple especially on the top this is where you choose which side is the top and which is the bottom both of these skins are identical to each other in terms of the rivet holes so you this is where you determine by the holes that you don't punch, that you don't dimple, which is the top and which is the bottom. And it's based on the side. Um, you see that there is one side that is uh, uh, at an angle, that's the nine degrees. There's another side that is straight. And 
If you do by chance happen to accidentally dimple a hole that you're not supposed to, the fix that I came up with, because yes, I've done this, is I took the squeezer and a couple of flat heads and I squeezed that dimple as flat as that squeezer would get it. You might be able to tell from here that the sun is setting, it's actually going away, the, the, the light is fading, but I'm super determined to get these skins dimpled. There's also, you, you notice that I have the, the, the table there. Um, I made, I, all I did was I cut out the notch in the center. Actually, it's better if you do two of these and to put on either side. Uh, I didn't have the table long enough, but that's okay. Um, I made do with what I had, with what I have actually. Uh, with and also, I what made it a little bit more difficult is if you'll notice that the uh, table, it, the riveting table or dimpling table rather, is a little bit too f too far forward uh, the, the notch is a little bit too deep I actually ended up modifying it and cutting it down to size now what I will probably end up doing is making a new table when it's t when it comes time to do the wings that's going to do it for this installment of check six aviation rb10 build thank you for watching be sure to give us a thumbs up like subscribe share this video with someone that you think might enjoy it. Peace.